I'm back at Rapido HQ in Vietnam. This time I'm without my family in tow, which I'll explain a little bit more about in a minute. It was really important that I make it here for our Trimaran electrical propulsion install. It's a major part of our design process and it's the thing that initially got me really excited when I was thinking about this plan. You'll hear about the hydro generation part of all of this a little bit later on. It's been a lot of sleepless nights the past three nights, if you can't tell. If you can't tell, you look beautiful. Thanks. We're still killing off the parasites that the doctor found in his intestines. A pretty bad case of parasites apparently, so he hasn't eaten in four days and I think the antibiotics is finally kicking in. But he's super sick and like dizzy and not himself and it's just scary and sad. So I need to leave. I've got to go and do the electrical installation for the electrical propulsion system for the boat. So I'm meeting Ocean Vault in Vietnam. I should have been there a few days ago, but Darwin is very sick. It's one of those things where you know as a parent when they're behaving just a little bit strangely, even though he's tired, he hasn't eaten in days, he's obviously very sick. But there's just a couple of things where Elaine and I are like, I really don't like that. Also, Riley got a, a haircut today. They shaved a bit close to your scalp, I'd say. No, it was perfect. Did you ask for that? I, I asked for the Tibetan monk. <laughs> well, you received. I certainly did. No, no, no. Shh, shh, shh. The doctor recommended going to hospital and Elena and I were both like, oh no. And then we said, how long for? And he said three days and we were both like, obviously if you insist doctor, but is there a way that we can avoid taking the kid out of the house for three days? We came to the agreement that he would come here tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon and we would mainly monitor like hydration. So we just got to make sure that we feed him the electrolytes. All of that would be 100% monitored in the hospital, but if we do a good enough job here, he said then, yeah, that's good enough. And then depending on how he goes tonight, I'll either fly to Vietnam tomorrow or not. What's happened really? We fed him half of his daily electrolytes and he's a new man. It's good to see him smiling again and doing all the weird little things that I associate with him that he hasn't been doing lately. Like going, ah, <laughs> like he's done something amazing 50 times a day. Welcome back, mate. It's like you've been in a coma for three days. <laughs> So Riley and I were watching our show in the lounge room and we let Lenny watch his iPad here at the table. And <laughs> I saw Riley's face, he went, <gasps> and I looked over at the table. <laughs> Why do I feel like a bad parent? It took us so long to notice this. So Riley is going to head off today. I just packed his little electrical bag, just the very basics of what we film with and whatnot. And it was such a relief to wake up today. Darwin is like himself again. Whew. That was a journey. Both Riley and I feel a lot better about him leaving today. He is going to go. You can leave it all behind, even the devil needs That plonk gone out the front. That's Derek from Ocean Vault, where he's the American part of Ocean Vault, which are based out of Finland. He's here keeping an eye on all of that side of things, doing the pre-conditioning work. Nice. This is our Ocean Vault electric propulsion system. Been uh, plotting and scheming and planning for this for a very long time. We can run it for you too, and you can see it do all its little movements. So it doesn't need to be in the water to run? No, it doesn't. I mean, there's no resistance on it, so it's uh, totally fine. I mean, it'll just make a little fan for you. Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
we wanted to share a great offer we just got for you guys from Surfshark. They're today's sponsor. You've heard us talking about VPNs in the past. They seem to be needed today more than ever with how much travel we're doing and how many of us are working online or just how much we do online. Some of the main reasons we use a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, by the way, is to protect ourselves online using Surfshark servers up to security. We got hacked six years ago or something like that. It was terrifying. When we're using public Wi-Fi networks, Surfshark serves as that middleman and disguises our online identity. It's come in handy when using Netflix or other streaming services. Some of the shows we love have just disappeared when we've traveled countries. You'd be so surprised about how many movies and shows are actually hidden from you based on your location. So we've had fun switching to 100 different countries to see what's available. Hot tip for Canadian Netflix is pretty epic. We also switch our location to find cheaper flights and travel deals. We also use a VPN when logging into our bank account. All it takes is a click of a button and you're on. It just runs seamlessly in the background of your laptop, your tablet, your iPhone. If you'd like to travel the world virtually, they've given us a discount code, which gets you 83% off and an additional three months for free. Just click the link in the description box below and use our promo code VAGABOND. So this is the whole electrical system. Pretty much, and it's not 100% accurate, but it gives the general idea of how the power is gonna flow from where and to where. Okay. And so our real fundamental foundation of the whole system is this guy here in the middle, the 48 volt battery bank that's uh, built on these six MG 7.2 kilowatt modules. Yep. For a total power of 43.2 kilowatt hours. So that's what's going to be powering the whole boat at yep. 48 volts. Yep. Where the power comes from is three, well, four sources. It's coming from the solar array all the time through the Victron and PPTs. It's coming from the ocean volt servo prop while the boat's sailing through hydro regeneration. Super excited about that. Very good. Oh, that's, that's, that's what you should be. That's the coolest part here. On the Yanmar diesel, yeah. it's running into this specialized integral alternator generator yep. that's providing the power. So um, this is coming when the motor's running and you're driving the boat, but it's also coming potentially if you're sitting still and the batteries are getting low. It's coming in through here too from the shore power at the grid yep. into the Victron. So right at Marina, we plug into shore power. Exactly. Here, into the batteries. Exactly. Okay. And then batteries to the 48 volt. 48 volt DC DC and then the DC DC converter. And they're also going to the servo prop too. So this is also a propulsion system as well, of course. Yep. So it's doing both the hydro regen underway and then it's giving you, you know, especially motor sailing, quiet motor sailing on light wind days, like, you know, and with this battery bank too, we're still talking about four to six hours of range on this just pure electric, yep. you know, while you're going. So depending on what the power management is on board the boat, the goal is that this guy gets run just enough to stay alive and not break down. Yeah. And then you're so sailing. You ha so how many, how many hours a week? Exactly. So three hours a week? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, if you're sailing well and you got the, enough sun going. No, so I'm sailing 100% of the 100 time. 100% of the time. So I'm just like, I just need to run this so it doesn't die. Yeah, just maybe a couple hours a month, really. Yeah, just so it won't that. last forever then. They're not they're supposed to be run like that. And then it'll have all the battery data. It'll have the solar data on it. It can take four tanks position so it'll be like your fuel tank, water tank, wastewater tank and then you can log in to the Victron remote monitor, their VRM system and on that you'll be able to look at all that data over time so you'll be able to see like when the integral system is running into the system, when you're hydro regenerating, how much power you're making in solar, you can see it for the last hour, the last year, the last couple years yep. and that way you can make all the decisions about power management and stuff like that to make the boat completely self-sufficient ideally in the yeah, future yeah, you know yeah. this countdown clock up here will tell you how far you have to discharge and how far you have till when it's recharged and then on this side is all the motor data and then if we hit it once it goes into night mode and dims the uh, throttle light over here so these are the control switches this is what turns on the big motor controller yeah and then this one is what turns on the servo prop controller yep Motor controller on first, servo on. You hear the motor turn on and then you'll hear it yeah, yeah, yeah. turn them on again every time you reset it. So it turns on, it communicates, and then it hones. And that's where the blades find their position and then go back to flat. <laughs> we 
finally got out of the house today, which is a big deal. We haven't been out of the house for more than a week now since Darwin's been sick, but he's feeling fit and healthy. Took him to the playground. And I'm about to head home. I've left Melly with the kids now so I can go home and do some work and play some guitar. be quite the contrast between Raleigh at the factory and me here in beautiful Bali. So I've started driving the scooter around Raleigh and I hired one scooter, we share it. So I was catching these Uber bikes everywhere until recently I was like, I have to step out of my comfort zone and get on this damn scooter. The last time I rode a scooter was in 2017 in Greece and I forgot how nerve wracking it is. I do need to go to the plant shop because this house, I just need, I need something. I need plants and some oxygen in here. Tonight, I might be catching up with some friends for bowling. Elena's made some friends, yep. It's actually a lot harder to make friends when you're an adult unless you join a club or join a gym or really put yourself out there. In the past, we haven't stayed in a place really long enough to make those connections and now we're here and this is the place we should do it. So I've just been like on a mission to make friends and I finally say I've got three friends. Mark's going to show me the different things that have changed about the boat. We cut the transom of the boat and, and mounted the dinghy yeah. sitting in place. So we had to lift the dinghy up and get the height right and yeah. you know, position it. So yeah, we've grafted in basically the shape of the dinghy. This thing is more, it's practical and seems to be okay. You would have seen where we glued it together. So that's all been fiberglassed around as well now. So after we glued the beams into the boat, we had to finish all the side decks and connect them to the beams. So the deck works as as one. Yeah, we did that as the front and the back. Tender, the fiberglassing around the glue from the beams being attached to the centre hull and the painting. Oh, yeah. this area in the cockpit and the saloon yeah. is pretty much ready for top coating yep. once we receive the paint. We're right at the front of the boat now. This would be mine and Elena's bed. And this is board bathroom, board bathroom, board head. The head. head. You yeah. When you were here before, we were just doing some finishing touches for like the door frame. It's cream. Awesome, man. Okay, beautiful. Jeez, they've done a really good job. You yeah. can get some carbon bench tops and carbon seat and a bit more colour around it. Yeah. When you won't be just seeing this colour, you'll be seeing other colours as well, I think it'll be nice. We've gone through and got all the cabinets. They the were point. in and you've pulled them out. Yeah, so we we were fitting everything. Yeah. And then with, with all the doors, like, like this here, we put the timber edges on them, we put the hinges in place, so we basically dry fitted everything. We're going to pull it all out and then we can paint it. Paint the back side, paint all the insides, and then paint the surfaces. One thing that we did decide in the end was that we were going to get the diesel engine. Ocean Vault was saying get a battery bank and Derek was saying don't get a generator. Ocean Vault said get a generator and as soon as they started saying get a generator I was just thinking well why don't I just get a diesel engine in there because of the kids for redundancy, for reliability and just for a series of unknown factors. Going up a channel, getting away from a hurricane, there's a, there's a bunch of different reasons why we would need that for a, a safety issue. That was the decision. My wonderful artistic representation of how the servo prop works. But basically what's going on with this drive unit here is as the water comes by while he's sailing, so the water's coming this way, these blades are Hold it flat, and so then when you're ready to start regenerating power, you activate the regen. It's gonna open the blades up. The water comes through, and then it starts spinning backwards. Yep. And then the water comes, and you're off to the races. Especially on this Rapido, you're gonna be able to make so much power out of it. <laughs> if you're really like, you know, hitting this guy hard, we're talking about a four to one ratio. So about every four hours that you're sailing around those speeds will regenerate an hour of like full speed propulsion. But just theoretically, at around four knots of motoring, you'll be at about one to one. So your 24 hour ability to make power in this thing versus a really big solar array is 10x. Let's say that you had a kilowatt of solar panels. Yeah. And we were to look at like, say, the solar coefficient somewhere on like the Australian coast, for example, where there's really good sun, there's not a lot of cloud cover. You may have a solar coefficient somewhere between four and six. 
Yeah. So you're gonna get between four and six kilowatt hours put in the battery bank over that 24 hour stretch. At sailing 12 knots, you're gonna have 20, 48 kilowatt hours to put in the bank over that same 24 hour period, mm -hmm. 10 times as much. Explain what's <laughs> going on here. All right, so this is the prediction for regeneration for the Rapido 60 with the current configuration and one servo problem. What we're seeing here is speed in knots up to the top of the polar curve on the Rapido 60. And then up we have power in kilowatts coming up on this axis. 10 knots, 4.8. 15 knots, 9.5. That's what I've seen online is the, those massive numbers. Say you're traveling at 10 knots and you mm -hmm. want it to Say say 4.8 kilowatts was was too much, and you just yeah. went look. You know, we just want we want two kilowatts for for the next three hours. You know, we typically see, depending on your point of sale, a drop of between 0.2 knots and 1.5 knots. So 1.5 if you're if the, screaming a heap of power into it exactly. and sailing upwind. Exactly, that's like the worst case scenario. This, for example, is gonna equal a full bank in 10 hours. With consumption, this is 4.5 hours. This is, you know, 20 hours. How far can I motor with my battery bank? Depends on the speed you're going, but let's say that you were gonna go at like four knots. It starts off like this, you know, and this, this amount of speed really doesn't take much in power. And then we really start to go, and then there's like a moment of plane, and then it goes way up like that. If you're only going like four knots, you're only using a little bit of power, you could have up to 20 hours of runtime at four knots. But then as you speed up, as we come up to like six knots, now we're in four hours. Yeah. You know, so that's the difference there. Mark has set up for a conference call with Dylan. Dylan takes care of all of the electrics apart from the propulsion system, which is, and from that point onwards, it's Derek. So Dylan from Onboard Marine Group came in for us as a bit of a white knight, and he's going to ensure for us that all of the electrical systems will communicate together and function cohesively as a unit. Thanks, Melly. I'll see you soon. <laughs> see ya. Mm -hmm. oh, I love you so much. Bye -bye. See ya, baby. Darwin is screaming his head off because we just had to give him his medicine. He's like a possessed demon. He just does not want medicine, even if it's a really nice tasting stuff. That policeman back there always pulls you over, finds you for nothing. So I just had to go on the other side of the cruise. Hello. Uh, is this your shop? Yeah. And what's your name? Louis. Thank you. Thank You're you for welcome. helping me. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> those are okay inside? Yeah, okay. okay. Wow, they're beautiful. Yeah, one of those too. Just wanted to say a big special thank you to Derek. We're very, very lucky to have him on board pun intended, I guess, to be helping us out with this project. He's one of the world's leading experts in electric propulsion, and we're just very, very lucky to have him around. I'll put his details in the description and maybe in the comment section, so if anyone's wanting to do a big project like what we're doing and, and have the Ocean Vault motors installed, he's your guy. He's really, really, he's very good. So yeah, thanks for your help, Derek. I think that's what, who's gonna deliver the plants in. Before you get the plants in, oh, Just wanted to do a tour of the house with my plants. Plant number one by the door, standing happy and proud. I've already killed one spider, so the plants are going to bring new fauna into the house, which was expected. I'm feeling much happier already with the plants in here. I can feel the energy. So one of the major things that we've been thinking about through this whole build process is buying things that are going to last a long, long time. What I have here, six batteries which are going to be providing, it's going to be the house bank, so all of our power that we use on board, the fridges, freezers, etc. Electric winches will all come from this. And it's also effectively our 
reservoir for our propulsion system. Love what's going on here. Life cycle of these batteries might be 3,000 cycles, which is 10 years if you went all the way up and all the way down every day. So in real life applications, that could be 30 years, maybe even more. The electric motor, how long will that last? 50,000 hours. 50,000 hours, which is 10 times that of a diesel engine. 20 minutes maintenance once a year for that engine. Yep. There's a couple of things here where the longevity is just mind boggling. Also a pallet of mine and Elena's stuff has arrived from overseas finally. You can't imagine how difficult it is shipping in this environment. COVID, shipping containers, prices have gone up and you just don't really know where it is. Ah, uh, yeah, so this is all of our stuff from overseas. No prizes for guessing what that is. That's my spear gun and that's everything that Elena and I own. That's my there life, <laughs> dude. Next time you come, then we'll look at all your bits and pieces yeah. you want to store and, yeah. and then uh, make sure there's a place for everything. Currently, the propeller is the lowest thing on the boat. So if we were to hit anything, the propeller of the diesel engine would be the thing that got hit, which is not good. So you want a sacrificial wing or fin down there that is going to hit anything, if anything's gonna be hit. And to do that, we've gotta do some designing first. To make this deeper, to yep. protect the propeller. Yep. We've got Helsinki on the phone. So maybe if, if you can go to the display, up top. it will show the ocean vault will go and then it's updating. What, what we've got here is we've got Ocean Vault, who are Helsinki, and they are logged into our system via the interwebs. They're manipulating stuff and doing things. Presumably, if I get the sniffles or a little tired or something, they can just drive my boat home. It should be, it's a very big safety factor. Okay, so I'm logged in right now. I'm gonna check the device list now. So he can see the status of the servo prop. He can see the status of the motor, the display, the throttle, and then that servo GX and everything it connects to, like the solar, and here we go, now the update's coming in. From, so this is the new software, the new firmware coming in from Helsinki. It's updated, yep, and now our battery data's in. The data here from the MG, though, won't update until we have the batteries fully charged and because we're still in a storage position with the boat. We're Derek gonna is gonna be operating the throttle and at Helsinki, it's gonna come up on their screen. The temperature, the watts, the angle of the propeller, the speed. They can also diagnose nearly all of the problems that might be occurring with this because there's so few moving parts. Most of the problems will be software. never put enough stuff into the panini or the sandwich so then you order a salad and then you can just stuff it full of what would be delicious inside stuff the lighthouse wakes up when the sun goes down signaling danger so we don't run aground Lenny, it's X marks the spot. X marks the spot, there's treasure at hand. Let's get digging, it's buried in the sand. Can you open the page? <laughs> you wanna dig in the page? No, open the page. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh my. Oh. I'm stuck in Vietnam, apart from my family. There's a little tear in my passport. Indonesia won't let me back in the country. I was really missing the kids, so this is just really. Could you take me to a shop that has glue? Hi. 